Hello there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another weekly update on news and information about DCS World. I'm your host of course, Prick the Hedgehog. I hope this video finds you well. Here we are on the teetering brink of some sort of election result here in the US. Hopefully it can be resolved so that we can move on with life in some way, shape or form. Uh, but uh, who's to say? So anyway, let's focus on DCS World and the massive patch, which I mentioned earlier this week already. It is in fact out, it is available for download, and there are extensive changes across the board in all sorts of areas. I will not read out the entire change log. It is far too comprehensive, which is uh, something I, I do sometimes. Uh, where specific things have been changed and are worthy of discussion. All of these things are worthy of discussion and mentioning, but it's just too comprehensive for me to go through everything. We're talking dozens and dozens of changes here. And like I said last week, we were expecting this. This is a massive change. It includes the things for the F-16, the F-18, the World War II uh, damage model as well, which I did, uh, in fact, neglect to mention last week. Somebody did point that out to me. Uh, again, it was just one of those things that I overlooked with the number of changes that were pending. I will, of course, throw in the link below. I've already put it up on the YouTube channel already for you to peruse. But uh, again, I will throw that link in there so that you can see it for yourself if there are specific things that you are looking at. But like I said, major changes to uh, a large number of aircraft, especially the F-18, the F-16, and of course the A-10C2, as well as the Harrier and various others. So let's talk about this, I guess, in an overview uh, kind of way. So again, this is for the open beta here, 2.5.6. Eagle Dynamics have said the following things. There have been major updates that have been made to the F-18 Hornet, and uh, there is a little video about some of those things, uh, which was produced by WAGS and Eagle Dynamics recently. Additionally, each item will be instructed in greater detail in an upcoming edition of the Hornet manual, and also new training missions to cover some of these things, so it's pretty cool. Several sound improvements, such as the ambient sounds in the cockpit, the startup sounds, new thrust noise, and distant sounds have, have also been made, which is really, really cool. Now we already talked about the A10C, which has uh, also gone through quite a lot of work. There's the new sound for the, uh, the GAU-8A cannon, which uh, was demonstrated recently by Eagle Dynamics. Now I was hoping to bring you some footage of this. Unfortunately, due to the election and some of the roles that uh, I have in my job, um, I've been working different hours <laughs> to cover some of that and I, I just haven't had any flying time this week at all, sadly. So um, I apologize, I do not have good footage of that. But again, I will bring you some of that so that we can uh, enjoy together the adjustments that have been made to this wonderful aircraft. I've been thoroughly enjoying it, as you know. And again, so it's an aircraft I'd recommend you get if you don't own it. It's a lot of fun and well worth considering purchasing. It's very layered. There's a lot of missions and things out there for the aircraft. So it's, it's, uh, it's well worth, as I said, purchasing if you haven't uh, got it. And if you do own it right now, it, it is uh, still on sale, but the, I believe the price has gone up a little bit since the initial $10 introduction. But of course, again, that, that was reliant on a pre-existing version of the aircraft. All right, let's go to the damage model here for World War II Ascent, which I think is very, very exciting. My phone is beeping here, I apologize for that. That is uh, frivolousness involving work. Um, now, so here we are. They are happy to announce the start of the open beta tests of the new damage model for World War II aircraft on the Eagle Dynamics multiplayer servers. Remember, this is to, just for the servers. And this is a way for them to test and get your feedback on these uh, new damage models. Uh, starting today with fighters, and then they will make uh, the damage model available to the bombers as well on November 18th. To participate, as I've indicated, you're going to have to get into the multiplayer tests, so join any of the servers mentioned in the list, which I will uh, add to the uh, links below. Uh, the new damage model is based on accurate damage and destruction modeling of aircraft components in relation to the location of internal elements in each aircraft. So we're talking here oil, air, hydraulic, and cooling systems engine and propeller installation, throttle and CSU controls, 
flight controls including trim connectors and airframe main strength longrons uh, spars and stringers. The new damage model system precisely calculates hits to these internal aircraft systems as the projectile passes through the aircraft and this allows us to accurately simulate the actual damage to the aircraft and the flight model. So for example here damage to the wing skin leads to a decrease in lift, damage to the spar leads to strength reduction and potentially wing snap at specific loads which is all very cool very very cool in fact so the new visual effects have also been added to help interpret aircraft damage a white reddish vapor trail indicates that the hydraulic system is damaged and the size of the trail indicates the size of the leak which would also be important not only for the <laughs> for the pilots on the you know flying that aircraft but also too if you are the attacking aircraft to decide whether or not uh, you know that's probably going to be terminal damage do i need to pump more lead into that aircraft because it's out of the fight that kind of thing so a fine brownish haze indicates that the oil system is damaged and that the engine will probably soon suffer oil starvation engine overheating and potentially fail a bright white trail of steam indicates that the radiator or part of the cooling system is damaged the instantaneous evaporation of water during the explosion of a water jacket will envelop the plane in a large cloud of steam for several seconds a white uh, fine vapor trail is the typical sign of a fuel leak no surprises there now combustion can also help to identify the damage source a burning fuel leak gives off dense white gray smoke and depending on the size and type of leak it can eventually result in a fire when the engine airframe is engulfed in flame the smoke often turns black as it mixes with oil that burns with a much deeper and darker hue structures made of um, aluminium or aluminum depending on which part of the world you're from. Wood or fabric covered surfaces can also combust based on the corresponding types of projectile. Uh, such smaller fires are not immediately visible, but you can identify the smoldering of elements by the thin streams of dense smoke trailing behind the aircraft. Additional information can be gained from visual damage, despite the fact that current computers can't dynamically bend construction and tear fuselage and wings a visualization system is a good indicator of the level of damage the system works um, sorry let me rephrase that is a good indicator of the level of aircraft damage now the system works as follows sorry that wasn't a very good flow on there we have four levels of damage textures for each aircraft ranging from zero meaning no damage to three which means maximum damage so first the bullets will um, uh, hit results in the level the first level of damage which would be visible and then this allows players to see some damage from the first hits. With further, further, uh, further damage, the second and third level textures will also appear. Now, experienced pilots will check all the damage levels within the, or can check all the damage levels within the model viewer for a better understanding of what to expect from the holes in the airframe. Now, please note that the damage system doesn't register any damage for the first 30 seconds from the mission start. So there is a, not instantaneous damage. So that's cool. Now in addition to, and it's going to be interesting to see some, actually some videos of that uh, as people start uh, recording their experiences in the service. So a cool, cool, cool thing. In addition to the damage model to the World War II aircraft, of course we also have some new assets for the World War II assets pack. Now these are free I believe, uh, and this is in order to broaden the appeal of the included missions for our World War II aircraft according to Eagle Dynamics, and they've included several of these air, to, air and ground units as a free part of DCS World. And these are as follows. We've got aircraft, the A20G, we've got AAA Flak 18 and the Bofus 40mm, we've got a, uh, the Panzer IV and the Sherman, uh, we have APCs, the SDK FZ251 and the M2A1, we've got uh, a couple of trucks, the Blitz and the Bedford MWD, in addition to the free World, World War II assets, we continue to add more units to the World War II assets pack at no extra cost. So we're talking here the M137mm AAA, the M45 quad mount AAA, the QF 3.7 inch AAA, the Daimler armored car, the M4 high speed tractor, the light tank Mark 7 Tetrarch, the FUMG 401 Freya radar, and that pretty much rounds out the newsletter for this week. <clears throat> Excuse me. So pretty pretty extensive stuff, like I said. I mean, the patch is, is pretty decent. 
and as mentioned the change list is quite extensive so I will not go through all of that as well but I will throw up the link so that you can see it but uh, for reference I mean there's a massive change here to the DCS world um, world uh, in general uh, everything from terrain things to behavior the AI gunners on bombers um, large list of things for the JDAM large list of changes to AI stuff, large list of changes to mission editor bits and pieces, um, the Harrier by Razbam, there's more than a dozen um, things that have been fixed or removed or improved, such as the high drag bombs can now be released as low drag, um, ghost velocity vector on the HUD will now flash when it limits of the HUD display, so on and so forth. Uh, the Mirage has had a few changes. The Avio Jet has had a few changes. Uh, more than a dozen changes here, I think. The Gazelle has had a few fixes. The JF-17, probably about a dozen changes. Uh, therefore, a couple of changes to the China Asset Pack. Um, the Hornet, massive list of changes. Probably well over a dozen changes here. Again, I won't go through these. Like I said, it's extensive and uh, there are some videos popping up already of some of the changes that have occurred that are specifically related uh, both both with uh, WAGS's videos and others as well so uh, additionally same thing for the Viper too about a dozen changes here we talked about this they've added the harm loading option uh, we're talking nose wheel steering gains the sensitivity has been adjusted which is great because it is hard to take off sometimes I've noticed depending on which system you've ha uh, had uh, we're talking uh, exterior lights, coverts mode that's been fixed, the air to ground missile 65W PM page symbology errors have been fixed. Um, Maverick should already be powered on and warmed up on air start, it's been fixed. Livery names are incorrectly formatted, that's been fixed. Aerodynamic forces on the gear posts inverted, that's been fixed. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, so yeah, they've updated the, um, looks like the German Viper manual, so again, also changes to the super carrier, static crewmen have um, collision, that's been fixed, uh, AI F-14 and user mission gets stuck in the middle of the deck and then vanishes, fixed, uh, lights are turned on on the bridge and open spaces below deck during the day, that's been fixed, all aircraft spawned from the runway have been fixed. Um, there we are, the A-10C here, like I mentioned again, a, a massive number of changes here, including things like being able to hide the stick at the click of a button at the base of it that's kind of cool so you can see some of those areas down uh, under behind which you, you can't do easily in a simulation especially if you're not using a vr um china hat hotas changes uh, flare count updated sounds for the gau gun we talked about that it's been updated it sounds fantastic too i might add that i got a little fly with it but it was really only five minutes in the aircraft this week uh, and everything else was, I just didn't have time. Um, so the profiles have been up to date, dated as a result of that for the HOTAS. Uh, canopy damage is now visible in the extended view and cockpit both. Radio core placards match the ACFT tail number now, really cool. I, was, I like those little small details um, and attention to detail, that's cool. The nose gear strut compression has been improved. Um, the helmet mounted queuing system implemented blue line connecting mini SPI and PPLI symbols sort of flight members and dash for other flights um, they've added default gun mode and HMD render eye options for the for the aircraft now uh, TGB boresight option was added so again it's <laughs> it's pretty extensive uh, they've done some things for some of the other um, uh, what is it the VKB gunfighter joystick I've renamed correctly in, um, uh, in customized profiles uh, a little changes obviously to the P47D, the FW190A8, the FW190D9, changes to the Spitfire, some broader changes to the Flaming Cliffs for the MiG-29G, the MiG-29, um, the SU-25 and the SU-25T. Uh, the K50 Black Shark has had a minor change, the Viggen has changed and we kind of talked about the World War II assets pack. So. Um, combined arms, the channel maps had some changes, optimized surface details, uh, same for the Syria map, optimized surface details. Somebody mentioned to me that they were having trouble with the maps after the new patch. <coughs> Excuse me, not uh, affecting me so much, but uh, let me know what you think. If you've had an uh, improvement or a non-improvement 
or a slowdown or anything like that if anything's affecting your system as a result of the change. I haven't noticed yet, but I haven't done extensive testing like I've said, so I can't really give a fair and accurate um, observation, but I didn't notice any major changes when I loaded it up uh, very quickly this week just to play around with that uh, A10C's gun. Lots of changes to campaigns, I won't read all these out, and that pretty much wraps it up in terms of what I'm going to talk about this week just again because it's so extensive it's not something that it's easy to talk about so I hope that makes sense all right well thanks for tuning in like I said let me know what you think of the new patch I we still don't know quite a few things yet we haven't uh, the the secret aircraft uh, I know pe plenty of people keep mentioning this haven't seen anything about that yet sorry can't uh, make any more comments on that don't know if that's uh, a reality still if uh, Eagle Dynamics are waiting for something we are of course uh, about a month or so away from the release hopefully of the Mosquito which will obviously slot nicely into the World War II assets uh, um, aircraft that we that we have and the assets pack of course so yeah there's uh exciting stuff to round out the year until we move into quarter one for next year and eagle dynamics has promised lots of new and exciting things so i think 2021 is going to be a promising year in many ways than one uh or more ways than um, than one excuse me uh sorry i'm a little tired today uh, like i said my schedule's off and then daylight saving so it's i'm struggling today a little bit just it's finally hit me and caught up to me um the irregular schedule that i've been working um yeah really goofy stuff uh uh in terms of uh you know what we have going on right now and i'm um, here i'm kind of referencing you know societal things the pandemic and all that kind of stuff and hopefully 2021 is a year that we can start making headway back towards normality and hopefully that will also be beneficial to eagle dynamics and all the cool things that they're working on for us so we'll leave it there Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in again. I wish you well, and I hope this uh, is a good weekend for you. Get some flying time in, that's what I want to do. And I will see you next time. Stay safe out there, everybody, and of course, carry on flying. This is Prickly Hedgehog out.